Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on the Casio ClassWiz Calculator. The ClassWiz is the next generation of a scientific calculator. The model that we have displayed here is the FX991EX. There is a textured surface, we've got silver navigation buttons at the top, a mixture of black and white keys, we've got blue, delete and AC keys. If I input 9 squared and we have a look at the screen, we can see that we've got smaller fonts than perhaps previous calculators, but the resolution definition is much higher than previously, so it does appear nice and clear. And another great feature is that the mode menus are now displayed as icons, which makes it a lot more user-friendly than previous generations of calculators. I'm going to switch to the emulator now, perhaps a little bit more cartoon-esque than previous versions of the emulator, but it is still the same calculator. And math mode is now indicated by a square root or a radical symbol with a little pen by it at the top. So it lets you know that you're in math input and output. And the primary mode, the initial mode, is now called calculate rather than comp or computational mode. So let's just scroll through and have a look at what modes are available. We also have a complex mode, a base to N mode, matrix calculations and also a mode for vector calculations as well. Then we have the perhaps more familiar statistics mode and then a distribution mode. So let's just have a look at this distribution mode and see what it has inside. We have three functions here related to the normal distribution, two related to binomial distribution and then two more features related to the Poisson distribution. So there we go, lots of useful features there. And here's a brand new feature on this particular calculator, the spreadsheet function. So what I might do is just input a few values here and see how this one works. So once I've inputted my values here, what I can do is to click on an empty cell here and very similar to other spreadsheet programs that you're familiar with, we can write a formula in a particular cell related to the information that we've already inputted. So I'm going to put in here equals A1 plus B1 and that's going into just C1 there. And here we can see that the calculator has added the values from A1 and B1 into cell C1. Let's have another go at that. Let's use the data from A2 and B2. Let's do B2 divided by A2. Press equals here, and here we can see the calculator's done that particular sum. So great for spreadsheet functionality there. Definitely a new feature, and I'm sure there's a lot more besides what I've just shown you there contained within that function. Nine is table mode, which I have done videos on in the past. And if we have a look, we've still got FX here, but I like the way the notation has changed. It is much more similar to a textbook display in terms of the way they display an algebraic X, for example. And what I'm going to do is compare two functions here. I'm going to input x squared and x squared minus 5. I'll just keep the start, end and step as default. And then it's brought up a table here where we can actually compare two functions of x, which of course can be very useful when we're looking at transformations of functions. Then we move into a lettered mode. So we've got mode A here equation and function, well it's a solver for simultaneous equations, linear simultaneous equations, and also a polynomial solver as well. So for x cubed, x squared, I think there's x to the power 4 as well. Inequality is very similar but related to inequalities. And then finally we have another new mode here, uh, a ratio mode. So let's just investigate that further. I'm going to choose option 1 here. I'm going to input the ratio of 3 to 1. And then what we can do is to work out the value on the left-hand side of the ratio, x there. I'm going to input a value of 27 on the right-hand side. If we press equals, it's worked out the equivalent ratio there, the value of 81 for our x. Now we're going to take a look at what is, in my opinion, the best new feature of this particular calculator, is that it produces QR codes that we can use for online help and also to produce graphics. So let's say we want help with matrix mode. Well, if I press shift and then option, the calculator will produce a QR code. And what you can do is you can download the free Casio Edu Plus app to your mobile device. And if we bring up the options here, we've got several options that you can choose from to read the QR code. There's also some class functionality, which is quite useful for teachers. There's also a history of your previous QR scans in there, so you can go back and take a look at things. But let's just select QR code. I'm going to scan the QR code that I produced from the calculator. I've made mine a little bit larger on the computer here. And what that produces 
on your mobile device is a list of instructions for that particular mode. So in our case here, for matrix mode. So very useful if we're uncertain about how to use a particular mode, we can go straight on a mobile device and have a look at some instructions there. Let's pop back to the calculator because that's not all with QR codes. Now I've inputted some data, X and Y bivariate data into stat mode, and I'm just producing a QR code related to that. So if I get the mobile device again, click on the Edu Plus app, and I'm going to scan in the QR code for the stat mode information. And here we have it all loaded up, and what it's produced for us is a scatter diagram or a scatter plot related to the X and Y values that are inputted. And there's a zoom function here, so we can make it a little bit larger, make it a little bit clearer. So we can see the data that I inputted earlier in a graphical form, and also it produces an online copy of the table of data as well for us there. Let's just have a look at this feature one more time. This time I'm going to go back into the distribution mode. And I'm going to try and answer this question. Find the probability that x is less than 66. And it's given that x is normally distributed with a mean of 60 and with a variance of 9. Well, I'm going to select 2 for normal cumulative distribution. I'll select a lower value of 42. I'm trying to keep it more than four standard deviations away from the mean. This is six standard deviations. You can go as low as you possibly want, but I'm gonna stick with 42. Upper value is 66 because we want less than 66. We've got a sigma, a standard deviation of three. Remember that's the square root of the variance of nine. And then we have a mean, a mu value of 60. And then if we press equals, then the calculator will generate the probability for us. And here we have our probability, so perhaps the three significant figures there, 0.977. So let's see that displayed on a mobile device. We're going to generate a QR code again. This time I'm going to scan in from the actual calculator. I'm going to open in my browser. And then once it's loaded up, we can see that we've got the information that we inputted into the calculator there. And here we can see it displayed on the graph. The portion that's highlighted in red is the portion that was included as part of our probability and then we have the other areas there labelled as blue, the Q areas. We do have a little bit on the left hand side there but that is quite negligible as we made the lower portion quite low, six standard deviations away from the mean. So there we go, the class wiz, great functionality, a great looking calculator and the QR code function really means there's a lot more interaction with mobile devices. You're able to generate some visual representations of what you've inputted into the calculator. Lots of other different uh, ways for the single variable in stat mode. It generates a box plot or a box and whisker diagram. And if you remember in table mode, we generated the two functions there. It will generate the graph of those two functions so you can actually visually uh, compare the two. So as well as looking at the, the data that the table produces, you've got a visual representation as well. I hope to be doing a lot more in the future with this particular calculator. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time on the Calculator Guide.